Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea, back here again for another video. I'm back to making regular videos, which is great before Christmas and the end of 2021. And a staple of my channel, you know, the rational perspective, my match reviews, let's talk Chelsea, discussing the latest topics, but also some great collaborations with brilliant Chelsea opinionated people. Um, this guy is one of my favorite guests. Um, he's helped me so much on the YouTube scene over the years. And uh, we've been wanting to collab for a few uh, months now. It's been difficult with my schedule and, and this guy's schedule as well. But Nini FC, I, to be honest, I was just about to go into my mind and go, what type, how many times you've been on a channel? But I've forgotten at this point, it must be getting close to like double digits in terms of the amount of times <laughs> you've been on Sunday Chelsea. Uh, but how you, how you doing, mate? We're obviously going to get into some good topics today. How you been? How you feeling before Christmas and the end of the year? Yeah, man, of course, you know, lovely to come on again. It's been a while. I've been looking forward to doing this collab. Uh, it's been, uh, we've been plotting on this for a while now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. It's just kind of getting ready for this year to end type of thing. It's not, it's been a kind of mid-year. <laughs> We're looking forward to the next year, to be honest. And hopefully better things to come for all of us. So yeah, man, just glad to be here. So we're obviously recording this after the Leeds game uh, yesterday. A mental game. I was at the game and... Hard to analyse. I spoke for 14 minutes, which, you know, it, it was quite dramatic, to be honest, the game. Um, I'm not sure if the game actually had 14 minutes worth of conversation, like analysis, like deep analysis, but it was a, a crazy game. I guess the way I'd frame it, you know, in terms of question towards you was if the feeling for me after the game and having a discussion with my dad as we were walking home from the game was in previous years when our form starts to tail off during winter, there were twists and turns in that game that felt like in previous years would have gone against us. But for some reason this year, thank God they went in our favour. Was that was that the way you sort of assessed it? And I guess you can jump onto sort of more analysis of that, of that mental game against Leeds. Yeah, I think it's a very fair assessment. Um, of course, it's not very often that we, you know, full of comebacks like that, especially right at the end when we had to. So, you know, if you have any hopes winning the Premier League title, games like this, you can't afford to just slip up uh, easy points, especially when, you know, Liverpool and Man City are just like ridiculously consistent. So, you know, I definitely feel like this is like another example of the improvement we've made under Tuchel, especially that this second part of the season. But uh, of course, it was a very end-to-end -end game. It was uh, it was kind of refreshing for me, to be honest. You know, sometimes um, it's just nice when footballs just kind of play more on those basic routes with players' emotions are taking over more than the tactics and stuff. So it was enjoyable then to get one of the rivals, historical rivals in Leeds in that type of manner as well. Hey, you know, I'm not complaining, man. Yeah, that the combative nature of that game it felt very much like an old school 70s Leeds Chelsea game to be <laughs> honest and, and I love that you know as you said as much as we like to delve into the tactical side of the game especially with a coach like Tuchel and yeah. pressing and XG and you know the way systems are built and the way we build up play there were just more intangible elements to the game uh, especially when you look at the the mentality of a player like Antonio Rudiger, Dave fighting with the Leeds fans, Mason Mount shushing <laughs> the Leeds fans. Uh, that, you know, right, it literally happened down below yeah. me, that tussle right at the end. It was, it was yeah. incredible to watch. But I can't I mean, deny... I, I've it. seen it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, the only, thing missing, the only thing missing was Diego Costa. I mean, oh. I wanted... To, could you imagine Diego in that game? Rudiger it, and Costa together? Wow, that would just It's such a shame. They, they literally... Ah. Rudiger joined the summer... Costa left yeah. those two never were in the same dressing room Conte. together. yeah. But I can't deny, as I said in my review, some of my concerns. Um, pretty much since the pro poster Juve game when Chilwell got injured, um, the performances against maybe not Man United. I felt Man United was a good performance. We just didn't take our opportunities. I think it was a high quality performance. Uh, more so Watford, West Ham, Zenit and Leeds. Uh, four games where I've seen sloppy errors mentality being questioned a bit more as much as we were just praising it a second ago am i being hyperbolic because we can look at the premier league table and say we're only two points off top spot but to me that there, there have been a trend of performances in recent weeks that have concerned me and have given me fears of previous winter blues as you'd say um that that i feel took all really needs to rectify in the coming weeks yeah i, I agree with you i mean of course yeah I, i'm very sympathetic Injuries, the key players at the wrong time. It's the story of our seasons. It always tends to happen during December. However, for me personally, I think that maybe some of the two core solutions haven't necessarily been uh, as, as great. Uh, for example, wing back system, um, relying upon Saul, where you, you kind of have to, I guess, in Hudson Adoy. 
that's going to come with its own issues. Um, you know, Hudson, for example, has been playing as a wing back again, and he's not playing as a very good one, to be honest. Especially that the runners in behind and um, not really providing too much forward threat as well. Too Saul not having the engine to even play box to box like that. I feel like because we're relying upon certain players out of position or players that we wouldn't be relying upon as much. You know, it, it, it's a symbiotic. It's a symbiotic thing in the sense that, well, you know, if that left hand side is weaker, that means the other players have to overcompensate. That means Rudiger will have to get out of position more. That means the midfield might be stretched. And I think it's no surprise why you know teams are thinking, you know what? Wow, this is the best time to try and you know go for Chelsea right now. Left hand side is definitely weak. Alonso, we know, is a player you can get at. They don't have many options there either as well too. So uh, it's not surprising why so many teams are targeting our right hand sides. Uh, personally, I, I don't know. Again, I'm not here to start undermining the manager or anything like that. But it'd be interesting if we could see different solutions. If we don't necessarily have the wing back, uh, are there not other ways we could use the team? Because it does feel like, especially that last game versus Leeds, it was the most disjointed I've ever seen on a Thomas Tuchel. For, for, even though it was very enjoyable uh, because of that. But seeing how the, the, the lack of connection, that disconnect on the left-hand side, you know, you've got Alonso and Werner, you know, they can't combine together. You know, Alonso, when I mean, he plays the ball to someone down the left, he wants to make that inverted run in fields. Werner's not going to hold the ball there. He wants to be the one who's getting in behind there. So it just doesn't really work like that. And I don't know, I think sometimes maybe I'll be forcing... Uh, you know, like round pegs into square holes in that sense. I, I feel like we are. And that's why opposition teams are trying to take advantage now. So I, I don't know, but the solutions we have in the team, I don't, I don't. I think we have the options to do something a bit different. We have the players, or we could maybe play in a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, especially against the calibre teams are playing against where, you know, they're not of the same, like, top four, top six nature. Yeah, we might concede one or two extra shots, but if that means that our attack can then perform better because we've got all our attacking players in full form, but they're not really, still not really showing to me that that cohesion that I'm really expecting to see. I don't know, it feels like there was an opportunity to do something like that. And, I don't, you know, I think the reality is this is Tuchel's first ever Christmas period, you know, like I was trying to say in my review, you know, tactics go out the window sometimes, but you've got cut games coming thick and fast, two, three games a week. You can't really prepare for that in a tactical nature. A lot of times it's just recovery sessions in between. And, you know, uh, yeah, you know the grit, the mentality, the hard work, the players are going to be feeling it. You know, they feel it in their glutes and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's really a difficult month for, for any manager. But, um, you know, let's hope that we can maybe find some more form. You know, players, I'm guessing, will be coming back in the next few weeks. But I, don't, I think personally, you know, too cool. I understand. I sympathise, but I still am expecting maybe some better solutions in game because the ones he has used haven't really helped us at all. To be honest, it's it's so the, the worst thing is as you said about the wing backs. You know, a, a key injury to arguably our best player in form at that period of time, Ben Chirwell, um, or just in terms of how vital the wing backs are to Tuchel's system, the way they the way we build up. Um, the the lack of communication I'm seeing from Rudiger and, and Alonso, like Rudiger, the amount of time he's trying to fire a ball into Alonso, where Chilwell would would quite clearly be on the same wavelength, but also have the mobility to play a quick one two and maybe into midfield yeah, and drive forward. Exactly. Alonso quite clearly doesn't have the same <laughs> engine on him, yeah. Um, and I think that's causing you know the way Rudiger charged out for in the build up to lead second goal. You know, it just there were moments like that against Leeds, as you say, and in recent games that have concerned me. And as well in midfield, you know, Jorginho quite clearly overloaded at the moment. He looks yeah. like a player exhausted, shattered. But there yeah. aren't. I'm not playing Sal in that position in the key game because he's looked yeah. so off. So that's you know, once you have Kante back, once you have Kovacic back, then there are obviously more options. But I do agree with you. Kind of, we've discussed. I think. At even before this season about the idea of a new formation and the one area of the pitch where we don't have any injuries is in that front area where we have mm. so many attacking options and you kind of think with the need to get Rom into form uh, Callum hudson Doy, his form at left wing Mason, yeah. Kai, Timo, uh, Ziyech I think has had some decent performances I, I do agree with you that it'd be interesting to see Tuchel maybe vary things up but you know it's, I think it's it's always that key thing that and the fear maybe of Tuchel since he's come in to go to a four at the back is the midfield area, yeah. defending in larger spaces when you don't have maybe a Kante available or someone else mm -hmm. in the transfer market you could bring in. Um, I guess just for the title race, 
perspective is needed, even with some struggles. I mean, I, I think it was so important we beat Leeds. And when you look at the table and you say we're only two points behind Man City and Liverpool, who have been in such good form, is it just this period of the season clinging in there, staying in there? It's just, it's it's making sure we're just at a manageable gap before. Is that really, even if performances aren't that great, it's just about clinging into that title race going into the new year? I think that's a super fair assessment, to be honest, uh, especially with the difficulties we've been discussing uh, for this video. And um, I think once we get past December, as we normally do, the form does pick back up. We do pass a bit more games in the months of like, you know, Feb, March, etc., etc. There's more gaps in between as well, too. Um, Yeah, I think that definitely is uh, a case of just, you know, keep on grinding, essentially. And I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, players, manager, they're all intertwined in this. Uh, but I think me personally, I'd like to just see maybe some better solutions in game at times. You know, I think a lot of times recently I've seen Hudson Doy come on as a as a wing back. You know, against West Ham, the amount of chances Byron then had all of a sudden up against him, you know, that didn't, didn't help us out. Recently, when he has been playing as a wing back, has really done nothing. And you know, in a game like uh, Leeds, for example, when you've got like uh, Werner playing up front because of his form, does that form necessarily uh, you know mitigate the team's needs? You know, with Hudson Odoi in those areas where you can bring people into the play and play make, I feel like from like a tactical complexion in that game yesterday, it could have been, you know, pretty different if you and, and that left hand side would have had um, you know, the pass maps would have been more symmetrical, would have been more even, and then teams they're not gonna be attacking us down the flanks as much as they're doing then. You know, they're not teams not looking as brave at all until this month in particular. So I do think that it comes down to finding the right solutions. And I think Tuchel can do better in, in regards with, with some of these tactical choices and subs, especially. 